today I'm going to show you how to apply PVC size to a cotton duck canvas. This is a 13 ounce canvas here, and I'm going to show you how to apply and size a very, very large canvas like the one you see here behind, beside me and around me. These are basically six foot by eight foot, or by nine foot, I'm sorry, six foot by nine foot canvases. So I'm going to show you how to size that right now. Okay, what you want to do is get your PVC size. And I'm just using this little Domino sugar bucket because it's an easy way to access the paint. What you're going to need is um, some stiff bristle brushes. This is a three inch and a two and a half inch. I use one of the bristle brushes for sweeping the canvas. And then I use the other one for painting the PVC size into the actual canvas. Now what you want to do is Shake your PVC size vigorously before putting it in a bucket. I had already shaken the other one pretty good. And pop your top. And for the estimated amount of PVC size that you think you're going to need into your bucket. Okay. And then replace the top. And then there's your PVC size there. Okay. Then you get your bucket, your little portable bucket. And of course I have the canvas spread on the floor because this is my biggest surface that I have. I could do this on the wall, but all my wall spaces are occupied. So this is how you would do this. And then what I do is I use one brush for sweeping and I'll sweep the first foot or so just to make sure there's no debris it's on the canvas, anything like that. Of course, it's going to require some crawling. You can see I have my shoes off, so I don't damage my canvas at all. Okay, and then I'll sit kind of like Indian style here on my canvas. And uh, using a nice stiff bristle brush, I'm going to use a two and a half one. And you just start right at the top, you know, making sure no hairs or anything is in there. I brush it good, but sometimes little hair uh, fibers don't brush off so easily. So, and you just start right at the top, and you just kind of slide over a little bit toward, you know, left to right, trying to get as close to the edge as possible. You don't want any standing pools of PVC size. You really want to try to work it into the mesh of the canvas as much as possible. Now this is the consistency of skim milk. And so it goes really thin and it sinks down into the canvas pretty nice. So this is good. Now I do this without putting it on the stretcher first because um, first of all, it can be um, unlike using gesso, if, you know, which is become the new tradition in painting, I guess. Most people use acrylic gesso, I should say. And um, with, if you're gonna do oil on canvas, and if you work large, like I do, oil on canvas, and you wanna have really good, ensure that you have really good archival uh, capability with your, um, with your work, with your, with your surface, of course, you can't buy these large sides like this in the average art store. I mean, when you're working large like this, you are truly an artist, a professional artist. And what you're gonna wanna do, like a professional artist, whether you're an amateur or not, if you like to work, or a professional, if you like to work large, you're gonna want to, uh, you're gonna probably have to stretch your own canvases like this and of course, if you're working large, you want them to be shown somewhere in a gallery or a museum or an installation somewhere. So your paintings are kind of important to you. So uh, you want them to last. You don't want them to last just 50 years or so. You want your paintings to last. Oops, I used the wrong brush. I have one brush for sweeping, the other one for painting. But I didn't put that much on, so I can still sweep with that. And the debris sweeps off just fine. Okay, and you just work towards 
the back of the canvas, just like this. And what I do is I kind of paint sort of very close to myself. So when I scoot back, so when I scoot back, I, I, I can, um, you know, I can just cover everything a lot easier. Okay, so, um, okay, so what I'm gonna do is go over this side. And again, if there's a little bit of debris, you might get your dry brush and just kind of scoot that off a little bit. Okay. And go in as close to the edge as possible, working the PVC size into the pores of the canvas, into the mesh. And the idea is to try to seal that. What you want to do is, um, you want this to soak in. This is um, this is a poly vinyl acetate, and what you want with this poly vinyl acetate, you really do want the uh, you do want it to soak into your canvas. You want it to permeate the canvas so that it, it's going to protect the cotton, and it's going to cause the cotton so that it turns into kind of like a polyvinyl, <laughs> acid, you know, polyvinyl. So, you know, you basically turn it into a plastic, you know, a flexible plastic, you know, because the canvas is flexible, it can be stretched still. And what I do is I stretch it right after I apply. I generally would do this, I'll do this and let it dry, and I'll apply about three coats. And if you really, really feel, you know, you really want to protect your canvas, I could go with four, but some people go with two, you know. Um, some people go with two coats or maybe three, and then they actually will apply acrylic coat. Sometimes I do that. I apply a, um, I use um, Liquitex Professional Gesso, you know, really, really good high quality gesso, not, a, not anything low quality. I try to find the highest quality I can. And then that way I can stretch it. And what that has a tendency to do, and I'm using Gamblin PVC size. Now, Golden makes a size where you apply a coat that actually provides the, the seal, the PVC uh, polyvinyl acetate seal. But then they have another like part uh, that you put in a subsequent layer. And that tightens the canvas. And that's assuming that you have already stretched a raw canvas over a stretcher because then you want that just to tighten. However, um, this way I use, when I use Gamblin, when I don't use Golden, I use Gamblin because Gamblin don't have necessarily an agent that tightens. And sometimes what I found is when you're doing big canvases, you apply the size and you stretch it. You stretch it first and then you apply the size. The size seems to be still pretty tight. But by the time you put the, the size and the, the, the ground on, and the ground starts to set up and dry, you start noticing some sag. You know, you have a canvas as tight as a drum. When you first went to apply your ground and your, and your size, then all of a sudden you have this like really, really flimsy canvas with a lot of give in it is just no good. It's just completely unsatisfactory. And I would never use a canvas like I would never paint on a floppy flimsy canvas. I just don't like the feel. I like the, 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 the canvas to push back. I like the canvas to be stiff. Um, so I do like a tight as a drum type of canvas. So what I do is I apply the size this way first before I stretch it. And then this allows me to then stretch it after the size is applied. So that way, uh, this because I don't believe the size, the size just kind of freezes the mesh. It does not cause the mesh to shrink at all. So uh, there is no shrinkage. So basically, even if you pull it, the size is going to cause the canvas not to give and, and sway with humidity and it's just the canvas is going to shrink and come back and respond to your atmosphere. What the size is going to do, it's going to eliminate shrinkage. <laughs> it's going to stabilize the canvas. And that's good because in the long run, what's going to mesh your canvas up, if you ever look at the Mona Lisa, 
even though it was painted on wood, just because it's the atmosphere, you know, oxygen, it starts to crack. And possibly the wood grain of the wood that was used, you know, stretched just a little bit as it absorbed more water from the atmosphere in different locations or wherever. And, uh, you know, and this is probably done in, 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 in the more, you know, in the 16, 1700s. Of course, once you got into the 1900s, people got more scientific about the conservation of these um, uh, paintings and antiquities. So um, <clears throat> what happens is, you know, they keep it in a special environment where the painting is not going to be, you know, stressing as much. You know, because you have various layers on your, you have various layers on your painting. And uh, this first layer, you know, first you have your canvas, so that's, that's your substrate. And then the first thing that you put on the canvas is the most important thing. <laughs> In this case, the PVC size. Or if you're working with acrylic gesso, that would be your acrylic gesso. You want to use the best, if you're going to use acrylic gesso, I always suggest you use the best that you can afford. You know, just don't splurge, don't try to save money on that step. <laughs> use student paint, you know, because you can always continue to apply layer after layer of paint and build your paint up. Yes, it's going to be more work, it's going to consume more of your time, but you can kind of still control the quality of your colors, even though it might be frustrating. But if you put, you try to save money on your your first initial layer, and that's a weak layer, and it doesn't have a good bond to the canvas, and it doesn't protect the canvas, and what happens is, when you go to add other layers, that paint, that layer might contract to, to the oxygen or the H2O or you know whatever moisture is in the air more than your nice paint layers you know, that you paint later. And what happens is just like any other fault where you have a layer underneath squeezing, and then it pushes out, then it squeezes and it pushes out. And what it causes that the more rigid paint layer with your medium in it and with all of your stuff in it, whether it's oil or acrylic, depending on how flexible your, your, you, you make your, uh, your, your painting, you know, what type of mediums you use. Some mediums are more flexible, but on oil, uh, your mediums tend to be, you know, crystallized. They tend to get very, very rigid, very stiff. That's when you get that nice jewel-like uh, image in your canvas. However, it's a little bit more, it's a lot more brittle than acrylic. So that's when you start getting cracks. So especially if you work in oils, I would definitely suggest you use PVC size as I'm doing now. And what I do is I don't just put this three layers. I put three layers on one side. And I put one layer on the back, you know, just to seal that, you know, just so that the air can't get to the back of the canvas. Because what you have is you have a situation where your front of your canvas um, can't breathe. It's sealed off. No oxygen is interfacing with it. But the back of the canvas can breathe. <laughs> oxygen and air and moisture can interface and temperature do interface with that a little bit more. Well, a lot more because it's not sealed. And uh, even though the canvas is going to give with that little bit of stretch and stuff, it's going to be given, but it's still going to be some pull. It's going to be some pull. So to eliminate all of the pull from the atmosphere, at least put one coat on the other side. Now these coat in, these sink in. I'm going to say that when you put your first coat in, it sinks in about two thirds of the way. Maybe, yeah, two-thirds of the way to the center of the thickness of the canvas. Then and you put your three coats, and then the second two coats is going to build up from there. It's not going to sink in because that would be sealed. Of course, you want to make sure this first coat is completely dry before you move on to apply your second and third coat. So what I do, as you see me painting now, I'll just go and paint this, and then I will hang this. I have some clamps on the back of this frame here. And then what I would do is I would hang this on those clamps on the back of this easel, <laughs> on the back of this canvas, and uh, let it dry. 
I just let it hang dry. That way it stays relatively flat. And um, any wrinkles that might be in it or any noodling, which is very little, no noodling, no, that could be any more noodling than if the canvas was raw and untreated. Okay, so now once I have this and I have a nice even coat, now it's hard to see this, so what I do is I make sure, try to make sure your lights are kind of reflexive so you can kind of see the material kind of uh, uh, on top of the canvas because it's almost on, especially on cotton duck, it's almost the same color. Okay, so once I have this, what I would do is uh, get up. Then what I would do is just grab this dude and pick him up like this and pick him behind my canvas and hang him up. On my clamps in the back of my canvas. So I'll go over here and I'll grab this dude and I clamp him on. That's it. Um, I have that hung on the back of this canvas. It's gonna probably sit up for 24 hours or so, maybe 48 hours, and then I would pull out a second coat and a third coat, and then I'll apply a coat to the back. And then right after that, I will go to another product that Gambling Company makes. It's called uh, Gambling Oil Painting uh, Ground. And this is uh, just like gesso, except it's oil based. And what a lot of people like to use is because your paintings don't sink in. When you get those flat places, sits on the top a lot nicer and smoother. However, they say only put on the can at about 5% uh, Gamsol. And so you would use some Gamsol with this. You know, however, I found that sometimes the cans are just too thick. The stuff is just too thick. I'm using bristle brushes and everything. And it's hard for me to get the texture that I want. It's just like really gooey. And it's kind of like um, yogurt. <laughs> so what I do to make it not like yogurt and a little bit more like milkshake, I put about 10 to 15% Gamsol in. <laughs> and then I stir it. I get a, a, another bucket like this. I stir it really, really good. Get that Gamsol mixed in really nice. And then once I get that in, I have the consistency I want. Then that way I can use a bristle brush or I can use a roller or I can use a squeegee and I can kind of get the surface I want. The problem with that Gamsol says it takes five days to seven days for the oil ground to dry. And what I found is it takes three weeks <laughs> to dry. You might want to let it go a month. That's each layer. So if you're gonna put on two layers, and really one layer is like three layers of gesso almost. Um, it's what I found. I wouldn't even say it's two, I would say it's closer to three layers. So if you put two layers on that, you have put six layers on. And if you put three layers of PVC size on, if you put three layers of PVC size, it's the same as the usual seven layers that I do. The consistency feels the same, although since it's oil ground, and it's canvas, the canvas is still very flexible. It's not that stiff taco shell type of thing for people who are used to stretching their own canvas. Feel that when you use acrylic gesso on cotton or on linen, you just get that really stiff taco shell type of, uh, that's what I usually go for after I stretched it. I'll just, whatever, you know, I leave a few inches in the back as I stretch it around because I do a gallery wrap, you know, one and a half inch gallery wrap type of, painting and what happens is that part that's left white from my gesso feels like a taco shell with the oil with this oil that gambling makes anyway i don't know about other oils because uh the williamsburg is, is i hear is a good one but at 81 dollars for 32 ounces that's kind of expensive this is 32 ounces and this is about 32 dollars at jerry autorama or anywhere so i kind of like this price point uh, it is an oil ground. Now, does the other one work better? I don't know. I guess one day I have to splurge and get the Williamsburg and see. <laughs> uh, but Julie, I have to have a client or have a painting that I know that uh, 
I'm getting the right kind of money for. Then I'll try to work out, you know, work my little my business plan on that. However, uh, you get a more soft. You get instead of getting that hard taco shell, you get a more soft. Uh, it's still thick, but it's more soft, like leather or pleather. Kind of feels like that. It feels like pleather, <laughs> and uh, so it doesn't really get rigid, you know, and firm. And that's why I think a lot of people like to use it with linen as opposed to canvas duck, uh, because linen by itself is stiff. It's harder to stretch. And when you do get it stretched, linen has a tendency to be st you know, stiff, stiffer. But you're going to have to apply quite a bit of muscle. If you're going to use PVC size with oil ground and then stretch it. Um, and sometimes what happens if I stretch it first, sometimes I would just stretch a canvas the traditional way. Stretch the canvas first, paint it with size, and then paint it with the uh, oil. Then it loosens up. And then what I do is I break the one side loose, uh, you know, like an L shape, you know, the top and the side. And then I pull and I re-stretch and I re-staple and get it tight like a drum. But what I found is as you are painting sometimes, it might loosen up just a little bit, not as much as it does before, it'd be all flimsy, but it won't give you that boom, tight as a drum all the time. And so that you might even have to go in there and stretch again, or you might want to get those keys where you can kind of just tap it with a hammer. I build my uh, frames rigid, so my frames do not move out or in. They just basically stay what they are because they're large. Now, I guess I could order some stuff where I can do, can do that, but I think when you do that, what's happening is you are stretching your canvas as opposed to the atmosphere doing it, and you're going to crack your canvas. So it's kind of defeating the purpose. So what I like to do is I like to experiment with this and I'll deal with just a little bit more flimsiness, you know, like this. This is a pretty big canvas and this is pretty tight. Same thing with this guy, pretty tight. And then even over here on this one, tight, you know, stiff. Uh, now these, I have to say that I actually use acrylic seven coats on. However, I'm going, I have a frame and I'll break the frame out. The frame that's going on this. Okay. So I'm going to use this frame here that I built. Okay. And then this frame is going to, and this one is actually a little smaller than this one. This one is right here is about, um, it's about, uh, 50, 55 and a half inches and one dimension and 83 in the next minute, simply because uh, I already know where this picture is going to go and I know how much is I'm going to get for it. And so it's a price point and I want to frame it and I don't want to pay $2,000 for a frame when I could pay for ready made or company that I can just order the frame from and just kind of snap it together. And it looks great. It looks just as good as anything you could get from a pro frame shop. And I can get that for $500, $600 as opposed to $2,000, $3,000. So I prefer to, to get, you know, because that's what it costs for a custom frame of this size, especially of this size. But this size is going to be closer to maybe about $2,000. This size for a custom frame is going to be closer to $3,000. Whereas if I just stick with this size right here, which is a little bit smaller, $500. So pretty good deal. Uh, so that's what I do with that. And, um, and that's how I go about stretching large canvases that you cannot buy from the art store. If you want to know how I stretch canvases, I do have some tutorials on YouTube and I have it at Stephen Foreman Creative Studios on Facebook. And of course, Steve Foreman, uh, Stephen Foreman on, um, YouTube. I have links on this video where you can get to all those places. Also, you can check me out on Instagram where you can get to all this, where I teach you how to actually stretch the canvas over a stretcher like this. And then I have another tutorial where I teach you actually how to make a professional old master's frame just like this that I have here, which is very, very nice frame, very stable, very strong. It would not snap, even if you use rabbit skin glue size and it puts a lot of pressure on it, this frame will hold up. Okay, talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye.